Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. So the Funimation and Crunchyroll merger continues to show its consequences. The now Sony-owned Crunchyroll has championed this merger as a big win for anime fans ever since it was announced because of course, a big win for anime fans is definitely when a monopoly is established over anime streaming services. But nonetheless, you can see one of their slogans for this merger, working together to give you more, which as it turns out, that phrase is more accurately stated, working together to give you less, because you are going to pay them to take things away from you, and you're going to like it. Well, here is a recent announcement. We all knew that Funimation would eventually shut down, but now we have an official date, April 2nd. Now, I am very confident that this date was chosen because if they did April 1st, people would have thought the details of this shutdown were a cruel April Fool's joke. And what I'm referring to is the fact that when this migration happens, Funimation users will lose their digital libraries. The digital products that they paid for, the digital copies of anime that they paid for, will cease to exist. They are gone. And that is a very upsetting thing. Now here is the official press release on Funimation's website. It says Funimation End of Services. As part of Crunchyroll's unification of fan services announced in March of 2022, the Funimation app and website will sunset on April 2nd of 2024. Rest assured, this transition will not impact your access to the vast library of anime available on Crunchyroll. See how they worded that, the library on Crunchyroll. We remain committed to delivering the best anime streaming experience and will continue to expand our offerings to cater to your diverse interests. Now, a lot of people have been getting messages from Crunchyroll who are former Funimation subscribers and they're getting this service update, thanking them for being a loyal Funimation customer and announcing the merger and basically what they have to do next. Now, I wanna just take a minute to correct some misinformation going around surrounding some screenshots like this. A lot of them contain this message talking about pricing where you see this jump from $5.99 as a Funimation subscriber to this $12.49 a month uh, Crunchyroll number, which is a bit misleading, as we'll see. Number one, for some reason, it's listed here with USD, and then down here it's with Canadian money, which already kind of skews the pricing. But as a lot of people have pointed out, this $5.99 is actually a grandfathered price from an old Funimation yearly price from 2014 that some people have had for many years. So people who have this grandfathered price from back then, they might see a price increase, but the regular user will not see this substantial price increase. In fact, if you kind of work out the Canadian rate versus USD rates, you can see that this really just kind of pans out to the mega fan uh, premium subscription option here on Crunchyroll, and it seems like it it just kind of aligns correctly. I'm not trying to defend Crunchyroll too much here, but I'm just trying to correct some misinformation that a lot of people have been spreading about this price increase or supposed price increase. So this is the section that I and most people are the most angry about when it comes to this Funimation shutdown. So buried deep within their press release, we have this question asking, what is going to happen to my digital copies? where they provide this response that states, we understand that you may have concerns about your digital copies from Funimation. Please note that Crunchyroll does not currently support Funimation digital copies, which means that access to previously available digital copies will not be supported. However, we are continuously working to, to enhance our content offers and provide you and blah, 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 blah. They're basically trying to soften the blow by saying, oh, you have this new library of content on Crunchyroll. But here's the main takeaway. If you purchase digital copies of anime through Funimation, those will no longer be supported on Crunchyroll. Basically, you wasted your money on these copies. They are gone. And that is obviously very upsetting to people who spent their money on these digital copies. And it's another reminder of the importance of owning physical copies when you get the chance. Now, this statement right here on Funimation's website has aged like milk. So on their digital copy section of their website, we have this question from four years ago saying, how long do I get to keep streaming the digital copy videos? Where the answer is forever. But there are some restrictions. 
and they attach their terms of use. Now, if you go to the terms of use, you see this section on availability of service and content where in the small print it says, subject to the applicable provisions of any additional terms, Funimation in its sole discretion without advance notice or liability may immediately suspend or terminate the activity of the service and slash or content and any elements and features of them in whole or in part for any reason in Funimation's sole discretion and without advance notice or liability. Now, I'm no uh, expert on consumer-related laws, but this seems a little extreme, okay? It's basically saying, like, once you purchase these digital copies, we can do whatever we want to them. We can take them away at any moment, and there's nothing you can do about it. That seems a little extreme. I don't really know. Someone out there probably knows better about this type of stuff than me. But that seems really extreme and unfair to Funimation users. But moving forward, within that press release, they try their best to again soften the blow by saying everything that Crunchyroll has to offer with these reasons listed here. But everyone knew about these sorts of basic features on Crunchyroll. People are angry about the digital copies being removed. I mean, that is a huge blow. That is something that a lot of people just will not be okay with. They are really upset about this. And you can go through a lot of the responses, but this one's very interesting. So here's a tweet saying, Never forget that Crunchyroll was once an illegal streaming site to watch anime just like any other, but they made enough money and now are just as evil as the stuff they were against in the beginning. Which, yes, in case you don't know the hidden lore of Crunchyroll, they were once a piracy website. They offered pirated anime. And they just got popular enough that they got legitimacy. And now look at them. Now look at them and look at what they're pushing. Because a lot of people, once again, you know, you can have multiple responses to what is happening with Funimation and Crunchyroll. You can say, oh, gee whiz, I paid a lot of money for those digital copies that are now going away. Oh, uh, well, I guess I'll just keep supporting Crunchyroll. I'll just, I'll just take it and uh, keep going, I guess, and keep paying these corporations who have no respect for me or my money. Or a lot of people have turned to another option, and that is the classic, and that's piracy. Now, of course, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would never advocate for the use of piracy. That is a crime. If you commit piracy, you'll never see the pearly gates. It's, it's morally wrong. I mean, how would you? I would never support that in any sort of way. But of course, you know, there's a lot to say about piracy when it comes to anime. At this point, it has become a very popular option, only growing in popularity over time, where it's reported by a lot of studies that anime piracies in the sites that host it are more popular than Crunchyroll and Hulu, for example, and remain oftentimes in the top 10 of the most used streaming services in the world. That's how popular it is to pirate anime. Now, of course... I say uh, piracy, very bad. But let's list off some of the uh, the, the cost-benefit. Let's do a cost-benefit analysis of pirating anime. Here's the uh, here's the, the cost, right? Your, your morals. Your morals are going to be affected by doing such an evil deed. But here's some of the benefits and the reasons why people will look at what Funimation and Crunchyroll are doing and say, eh, I'm going to go another route. Uh, number one, you own what you're pirating. Okay, you own it. You download that content. Digitally, it is yours. No one can take that away from you. The website you got it from can shut down. It doesn't matter. It's still yours. And also another very important feature of these piracy sites is that they consolidate anime. You know, there's no reason to have 15 subscriptions, no requirement to have that many subscriptions just to keep track of an anime as it tosses around from streaming platform to streaming platform as the seasons go on. The famous example is Pokemon. Everyone talks about Pokemon in this regard, where I think you need something like 15 subscription services to actually watch all of the Pokemon anime, as opposed to a piracy site that'll just have it all aggregated in one spot, and that's it. Now, another reason that people classically choose piracy is availability. A lot of anime just is not available for purchase, and the only way you'll get it is through these piracy sites. And it kind of reminds me of the AI talk with AI translations. For a lot of people, there's certain anime they want to watch or consume or even manga, whatever, where there's just not a translated version out there. It just doesn't exist. So it's either don't consume it at all 
or have the at the AI translated version of it and at least get to consume it in some form even if the translations aren't perfect. It's the same deal with pirating anime. Either you don't get it at all because there's no legal way of doing it or you can have the pirated version. At least there's something with that version. And another thing, if you've been around long enough with Crunchyroll and Funimation, I'm sure you've seen the dreaded due to licensing limitations, this content is unavailable in your region. That is a message a lot of people have gotten due to issues with licensing. You don't deal with that with pirating. But anyways, that is the spiel on that. And going forward, I think the public response to this whole situation has been clear cut. People are pissed off about this. People are angry at Funimation and Crunchyroll, mainly Crunchyroll for adding this in, really showing the ultimate level of greed, or at the very least showing that they have no respect for the money and interests of the people that are migrating from Funimation over to Crunchyroll who don't have a choice in that matter. It's either migrate or just lose everything. So it's a, it's a very tough position. Who would have thought having a monopoly on the anime streaming services would have consequences like this? But while we're talking about some uh, issues with that company, here's a company that I really like and I think you should support, and that is Uwu Market. We've worked a lot with this merch company before, and in their kindness, they have extended my signed poster campaign. I released this poster about two weeks ago to celebrate two years since my VTuber debut. And yes, you can check it out here. Beautiful artwork from them, as always. And if you order it in the next week, we are extending it by one more week. You can get this signed poster with the old Rev John Hancock on there. And due to the immense support for this campaign, my wrists are going to be pretty sore from signing all these posters. But I invite you to join in on the list of people receiving these signed posters. I will put a link to this in the pinned comment, so make sure to check it out. And my other merch listed through Uwu Market as well. They are extremely well liked. Their merch is top quality, but yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please share all of your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys next time.